Well, I don't know. Everyone has a podcast now. Well, not really. What is true is that, according to Nielsen statistics, 55% of the U.S. population, that's over 155 million people, have listened to a podcast, and 24% of the population, that's 68 million people, listen to podcasts weekly. And these numbers continue to trend upward. What's also true is that over 75% of all podcasts fade away after the first few episodes. It could be for a variety of reasons, lack of strong concept, poor production value, people not realizing how much time needs to be dedicated to it, or simply just not knowing how to get the word out about podcasts. That's where WeKnowPodcasting.com comes in. At WeKnowPodcasting.com, we have a combined 25 years of podcast experience, and we can help you achieve your podcasting goals. Whether you need help starting a new podcast or want to take your currently active podcast to the next level, we got you. From consultations to concept development, from theme music to editing, promotion, animation, graphics, you name it and we're here to help. Don't become another failed podcast statistic. Let us guide you and help your show become a success. Check out the website at WeKnowPodcasting.com. And even if you're on the fence, don't hesitate to reach out. We're friendly guys, we're passionate about pods, and we're here to help. Guys, here's a little bit of a wizard behind the curtain when it comes to Christmas 365. There's uh, an issue that happens with our show particularly, which is the fact that from January till about October, all we've got to talk about is old shows and movies and specials. And then when we get into the thick of it in November and December, like we want to talk about the classic Christmas specials and movies that mean a lot to us but simultaneously it's like we should be thinking about staying topical and what people are talking about and like all the streaming sites are dropping all of these christmas specials and and whatnot and it's just it's a lot it's a lot to juggle yeah we keep getting hit left and right with brand new specials within those months but like a gift from above like a gift from santa claus himself matt what did we get well to be fair it's probably a gift from covid but what we got (laughs) what we got gifted was a christmas special of ted lasso in the middle of august i had discovered ted lasso like a lot of people in the middle of the pandemic when all of these people were talking about how ted lasso was the show we needed in our dark times and i wholeheartedly agree but I was laying on my couch, had no clue that it was a Christmas special when I popped it on, started watching it, and I texted Dylan and said, hey, have you watched Ted Lasso before? As my softball into being like, hey, he just released a Christmas episode, and I think we should watch it. <laughs> now, Dylan, something was happening on your side of the state. That's so funny. I was walking through the mall with Teddy, who I've talked about on the show before, and she looks at me and goes, apparently Ted Lasso just put out a Christmas episode. You guys should cover that for the show. And she has been a huge fan of Ted Lasso from the beginning, and I had never seen it. To me, the name Ted Lasso, I'm like, I'm not going to watch that. That sounds like a cowboy. Like, I'm never going to watch that. And he kind of is. (laughs) And he is. He kind of is. But but I found out it was Jason Sudeikis, and honestly, Apple Plus is the one subscription (laughs) service that I've been refusing to get because there's not too too much on there currently but everybody have been talking about ted lasso funny enough this is going to be the second week in a row i bring up chris tansky of fright rags but he absolutely adores that show and posts about it all the time on facebook so i i get it from three different people that i should watch ted lasso so I, i was very informed of what ted lasso was this past weekend and you know what 
I sat down, I watched Ted Lasso from the beginning, and my God, Ted Lasso is now one of my favorite shows. And this Christmas special, this Christmas special, I texted you when it was over, has become one of my favorites and one that I can guarantee I will watch multiple times as we get into the season. So Ted Lasso is the combination of Jason Sudeikis and someone who we've discussed already on this podcast, but Bill Lawrence, the creator of Scrubs, is also the creator of Ted Lasso. Uh, In fact, Zach Braff is currently uh, nominated for an Emmy for the second episode of the first season that he directed called Biscuits. So near and dear to my heart, obviously, as a diehard Scrubs fan, Bill Lawrence can honestly do no wrong as far as I'm concerned, just based on the (laughs) quality of Scrubs and the quality of Ted Lasso. So diving into this special, I agree with you, Dylan. What this special does that I think is so fantastic is that it is funny. Yeah. We are going to talk about the whole plot line of Roy and Keeley, which is just such a hysterical plot line. But while that's happening... It is the most good vibes. Everything that you and I preach about why we love Christmas just consolidated into this magical 30 minutes of just the the family that you create through tradition and like giving to the less fortunate and singing songs with your friends and like it's just it's all there if you need it to explain to someone what christmas 365 podcast is about in a nutshell show them this you show show them this this special and you're like this is the vibe that they try to put on every episode of their podcast i was so worried when i started this show because I'm sitting down watching it and I'm asking questions throughout it. I'm like, is is he ever going to snap on Jamie? Guys, if you have not seen Ted Lasso... Watch it and then come real, back. Please, yeah, just pause, go watch it and come back. Like, it is absolutely amazing. It is one of the most feel-good shows I've ever watched. And, and I was kind of rolling my eyes when people told me that because I'm like, oh, here we go. All right, we've got this asshole on the show named Jamie and and he's going to keep causing problems and we've got the owner of the team Rebecca who's it basically starts off as major league like this yeah and I'm like we've got some underlying tactics like I've seen this before and I'm just going to be grumpy with these characters throughout and eventually everyone becomes a decent person it's and I'm like it's a lovely it's a lovely show of I, I always explain it to people as it's Mr. Rogers coaching a soccer team. And it's yeah. that idea that like everyone becomes a better person for having known Ted. My favorite character in the whole show is Keely. Oh my God. The fact that so she amazing. just so, she was the first one to truly recognize yeah. the wholesomeness of Ted. Cause she walks in on him, like covering up photos of her in the locker yeah. room. And she's like, Oh, this guy's legit. And then the idea that it's her and then the journalist from The Independent that they basically are like, we're going to put this guy on him. He's going to drive this dude away. I think that's my favorite episode. Oh, my God. The, the How much that writer just like – like I love that his article is like a basically like I don't think they're going to win any games, but for Ted, I hope they do. Like it's just like – this yeah. dude's just like, I want nothing but the best things in the world for this man. <laughs> like, because the show itself, that first season, subverts your expectations because you keep thinking that these characters are just, the entire show is going to be about them trying to bring Ted down. And it's the exact opposite. Ted brings them up. And I absolutely adore it for yeah. that. I adore it. The show, just it's so feel good. And I mean... I guess there's one character who really doesn't become a better person, but even at the end of the the first season, like he kind of gets his comeuppance a little bit because the team does actually lose, which I didn't know that that was uh Giles. Yeah, I didn't know that was Giles. When I first saw him, I was like, "God, that dude looks familiar." <laughs> and then I looked him up. I was like, "That's Giles and the Repo Man." Yeah. <laughs> I think that that's also brilliant though because the fact that he is the only person who is not made a better person by Ted Lasso, literally his character to me is as infuriating as like Umbridge in the Harry Potter books. Because yeah, it's just like, I can see that. Because you're just like, how could you're so conniving, you're so mean spirited, and you are so unwilling to like be pulled into the beauty that is this man and his like wholesome 
positive vibe that he's just setting off. But let's dive into the, the Christmas special. So the Christmas special, we find out that Higgins throws a big Christmas gathering at his house. Higgins is, is an amazing character, yeah. too. He, I love Higgins. He, he invites any of the players who are transplants for the team to come and have Christmas dinner with him. And yeah. and the premise is that, you know, usually it's maybe two or three people. But like this year, they've had so many new players from all around the world that you get this this amazing sequence of like all of these players. They're playing with the kids. They're playing with the Nerf guns. And they're just like sharing their different traditions of Christmas yeah. together. It's, it's like I almost want to have a party like that. I almost just want to yeah. be like anybody come over, whatever your Christmas tradition is, bring it with you. And let's just like hang out and enjoy different types of food and play different types of games based on like what people do at Christmas time and just like have an amazing time. And then Higgins gives that incredible speech of just like a thing that we all already know, but it's like you have the family that you're born into and you have the family you choose. And oh God, so good. And it's it's so in any other show, Higgins is like that character is like the comic relief that always gets picked on. That always is the, the butt of the joke. But in this show, Higgins brings everyone together yeah. and they're all eating on the surfboard at the end. Cause Higgins wife's like, I don't know where the hell we're going <laughs> to sit. Cause there's so many people there. Basically the entire soccer team is there save for Roy and I, Jamie yeah like the, everyone else is pretty much there so just it's it's an incredible moment and like you I I think I really want to have a big party yeah. like that for I Christmas and just have everybody I'm gonna else. go ahead and skip the normal did you cry because I know that you did because I did too 100%. I was like crying the whole last 10 minutes multiple, of this episode multiple <laughs> like, times and there are parts of this show that really hit home for me yeah um, specifically with Ted Lasso's family and like Ted Lasso going through the divorce and everything and that watching It's a Wonderful Life alone and, and kind of going through those moments, like that had me ball. Oh, dude. And he has that great line where I'm blanking on the name of the owner of the, the team that gets him out of the house, which in a beautiful callback, her doing the oh, high Rebecca. Ted, Rebecca, Rebecca doing the, the high Ted outside of his house, the way that they used oh, to do the high Rebecca so to her. Good. Yeah. You know, he even says like, you know, this is a lot better than me just sitting at home alone, you know, drinking and watching It's a Wonderful Life because that could have gotten life. dark real fast. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, like, and it was like, I've been yeah. there. Like, it, it's so identifiable. And, and Becca and, knowing and, from experience how hard the first divorce Christmas is yeah. and knowing like he has it in his mind that this is going to be one way and it's not. And like, yeah. And like having that that intuition to be like, no, I'm going to go. And I'm going to surprise him and I'm going to show him what I do at Christmas time because he's going to love it. And the idea that they just pretend to be elves delivering gifts that Santa forgot as like, I would, yeah. another thing I would love to do. I would Perfect. love it. And it, it's, dude, that stuff's, that stuff's real. Like, I mean, fuck it. I get real personal on the podcast all the time. Yeah. My Christmas this past year was also my first Christmas going through the divorce. I've talked about this before of where I felt like, I think I was using that to kind of cover up my sadness and, and like what I was kind of going through. And, and I'm, I'm better now or I'm not better now, but I'm working. Yeah. You're working towards it, it now. Exactly. We're all very pro therapy and, and exactly <laughs> taking care exactly. of yourself. So having the small moments that I did is, is a very similar thing where t it's not making Ted like, happy like he's not over his divorce all of a sudden but he has this moment he has these great moments pulling him through it because he's right that could have gotten real fucking dark yeah and and at times it really will but yeah. at other times it's it's not going to be the show is so amazing because it's this circle of people that care about one another so much but we need to jump into the last piece of this this three-part story oh my god with i mean it's so funny but also so beautifully heartwarming is yeah. the roy kent and keely this is their first christmas as a couple they're gonna have sexy christmas to sexy get christmas dude all right all right all right dude let's keely flip the switch here because holy shit dude keely right. slurping down the chocolate fountain just like which is just relatable to me as a as a fatty. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, of course. I would be like, ooh, chocolate fountain Listen, all to me. I got to be real careful <laughs> like, here. But she opens that door. 
Oh, she looks okay. fine. Woo! <laughs> oh my god, I audibly said, "Holy shit!" Yeah, while watching that episode, Keely um, she's is a very gorgeous woman. She's a gorgeous woman, and but I think that on top of the fact that she's gorgeous, her character is just so immediately likable. Exactly, and I think that was a mix too, because you're like, "Oh my god, she's gorgeous, and she's a good human being." Yeah. Like, well, and I think you know, we we before we hit record, we were talking about the episode that I refer to as the darts episode, um, but yeah. that episode also has her doing a press conference with Roy um, where she's jumping to all of the different seats and pretending to be different people asking questions at a press conference so that he'll ask her out. Like she's just so likable, but yeah. So all of a sudden Roy comes home with his niece, Phoebe, who we've met a couple times before who it is so like charming that she opens the door in her sexy Christmas outfit and it's the niece. And she's just like, huh? Yeah. What are you doing here? Like, like it's it's not. She doesn't freak out or anything. Yeah. Like it's just okay. What's going on? Like I love that interaction. And the niece just comes in and is just like you could tell she's been going through it. And we'll find out why in a few minutes. But it, it's just such a charming, wholesome interaction. Damn it! This show is so it's so good. good. So they notice that she's really upset, and they finally find out that her secret Santa Bernard, I believe, was the person's name, <laughs> gave her a Christmas gift of mouthwash and toothpaste saying that she needs this. And yeah. she's so heartbroken. And Keely's like, let me smell your breath. And then Keely oh. reacts really poorly to the smell of the breath. And yeah. then Roy asks to smell the breath. And I feel like Roy has some of the best acting I've ever seen in my entire life. He does. Cause he's like, Listen, I've spent my entire life in locker rooms with guys. There's nothing that's going to shock me. (laughs) And his face is like, you can tell that he has just smelt the worst thing he has ever smelled in his entire life. And he's trying so hard to internalize everything that he wants to do. And like the the niece can read his face. But Keely, always the optimist, is like, no, 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 no. This is a very good thing because like this isn't just you're not taking care of your teeth there's something wrong and we need to figure yeah. out what it is yeah. so like they literally just start going door to door to find a dentist on christmas morning that will be able to help figure out what's up with the bad breath uh, i i believe the bet was they had to find a dentist within 10 blocks or each of them would receive 1000 pounds yeah you know phoebe's like uncle roy this is embarrassing and he tells the story of how he pissed his pants <laughs> earlier that year and he says it while the one kid's got the door open he's like roy can't pieces his pants so do i <laughs> yeah it's so charming oh my god and then this roy's so i know good. and then roy's so good about it when he's like how about we both work on trying not to do that anymore like it's just yeah. like everybody's such a good character god damn it so then yeah they finally find a dentist and the dentist even is like she says phoebe i must tell you you have some fabulously terrible breath (laughs) (laughs) but then they do that love actually parody outside of the kid's house and like it again it's like hey you know if you make fun of me again i'm gonna sick him on you and roy like growls but then the sign just says but i forgive you and you're just like oh my god how can i not Love this show. Like, how do you I not just love, love this we, show? She has a sign that also points to Keely, and Keely just goes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just everyone is so likable. But while Ted and Rebecca are doing their Christmas elves thing, they at one point they pass by a band just outside doing Christmas music, and they sound great, but... Yeah. Rebecca, who was supposed to go to Elton John's Christmas, Christmas party, party yeah. where she just desperately wants to see Daniel Craig and Rachel Weisz fuck, which is yep. such a great line. And Ted's just like, I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> it's just like, I just love that he's so go with the flow. But she's like, I'm going to skip the party. There's something else that we need to do. And God damn it, if they don't show up at Higgins' house with all of these people who aren't with their families and sing one of the best Christmas songs of the last 30 years, Baby, yep. Please Come Home. Yep. Oh, my God. I just And they're both not bad at singing. Like, you're just, no. it's just such a beautiful moment that will live rent-free in my brain until the day I die is I will yeah. think about them singing that song. And like that, as if the rest of this episode wasn't enough to be like, yo, I'm watching this every Christmas. Like 
that moment seals it for me. That is such a perfect encapsulation. And then it goes into like that moment where you just see Santa in the sky. And it's like, yeah. it's so absurd. It, it does not fit into the reality and the fabric of the rest of the show. But God damn it, if a Ted Lasso can exist in this world, of course a Santa Claus can exist in this world. Well, that's like their little moments. Is it one of Higgins' kids who talk, who's like, I know Santa's not real? Yeah. And I think it was Sam on the fo- football team looks at him and he's like, well, it's not that he has to do these deliveries all in one night. He just has to, there's 24 different time zones, dude. Like, you yeah. can totally do that. And the kid's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I just <laughs> love little moments like that. Here's, here's my suggestion to the folks at home. So you've gone through the series of Ted Lasso so far and you say, I want to add this to my yearly Christmas viewing. Here's where I would put it, mainly for that opening. Watch Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas and then follow up with Ted Lasso's Christmas episode because we did skip over the fact that the intro is them in stop motion animation. Yeah, which I did love, but I also found myself thinking, I hope this is just the opening credits. If the rest of this is like this, I'll be very upset. Well, well, that because if I if I had seen it like that, because the stop motion animation is very reminiscent of Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas, like the way that they did it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same studio that did it. Yeah. I, again, we're not the most informed Christmas podcast, but we are the one with the most spirit and the one that curses the most. Yep. And those are two really fun things to have under our belt. But you know what? I, I mean, at this point, I feel like if people didn't heed our advice and listen to this whole episode without watching Ted Lasso and they don't immediately feel like they need to go watch Ted Lasso, there's nothing we can say on these microphones beyond this point to convince them. No, a lot of the times, guys, when you listen to us, you hear either me gushing over something and Matt being like, it's okay. Or you hear Matt gushing over something and me being like, it's okay. Or we both hate it. This is one of those rare points oh, where the love both is of us, una- unanimous, please, if you have not already, go watch Ted Lasso. Like, seriously. I, I don't care if you don't care about soccer, football. I don't care. Like It actually, side note, it makes me want to watch soccer more. <laughs> yeah, dude, it, made me, it makes me want to buy FIFA and play it. <laughs> like, like I, I have no desire to watch soccer. I've attempted multiple times specifically during like world cup. Cause I, I love things that bring people together. No, same. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch the world cup cheer for team USA. Let's do it. And I'll start watching. I'm like, I don't care about yeah. soccer No, but, but I'm with you. I'm like, this makes me care about soccer. Dude. Football is life. Yeah. Football is life. Football is life. Football may also be death. <laughs> and sometimes football is just football. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the one thing I will say. The quote that Ted Lasso has said that will stick with me, and I won't give the whole context. I don't want to spoil anything. But Go for the it. first episode of season two, something happens, and he's talking at a press conference, and he's talking about how there was a dog that used to scare him as a kid, and then eventually he became the owner of that dog, and then one day the dog died, and he said, it's funny how sometimes the thing that will keep you up at night with fear uh, will be the same thing that keeps you up at night when it's gone. And it's like, oh. <laughs> like what what an amazing quote to think about. And just like, uh, it's just good, incredibly insightful, brilliant speeches just scattered throughout this amazing show that I've heard. I don't know how true this is, but I've heard that they're only really planning to do four seasons, that they've got, hey, we know how this ends. And like I love that. I as much as it. as much as I would love to have Ted Lasso follow me all the way into my forties and fifties, I'd rather have a perfect four season show that I can visit over and over and over again whenever I need a pick me up. Yeah, if you need a pick me up, I cannot recommend like Ted Lasso any more than I already have. Yep. Like seriously. It is the perfect pick me up show if you're feeling down, like just turn it on immediately. You will not feel bad. It is amazing. Yep. Please watch Ted Lasso if you have not already. And uh, with that, I'll just say, uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas, Dylan. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, Matt. Whoa, oh, whoa.
You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.